Praise God. What a blessing, huh? What a blessing to be together. Uh, maybe it makes us appreciate a total environment a little more. <laughs> you know, that God would bring us together like that, that God would have us <clears throat> um, regularly close, regularly sharing, regularly moving. So hopefully, uh, even though we're able to do this, <clears throat> I believe that his greatest desire is that we flow together as one and we be, uh, we have all things common in the spirit of Christ. Um, okay, well, it's, uh, we're, we're moving ahead here um, into Genesis chapter 16. Let me confirm that. Oh, I guess we're not. <laughs> I thought we finished. Anyway, we're going to go in, into chapter 17 anyway. Um, so let's, uh, let's read uh, Genesis 17, 1 through 14. Okay. And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee, and will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham, which I'm very thankful because I'm ready to call him Abraham. <laughs> um, uh, for a father of many nations have I made thee, and I will make thee exceedingly fruitful. And I will make nations out of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee, and their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee and unto thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession. And I will be their God. And God said unto Abraham, first time that it's changed it, God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore, thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. This is my covenant, which ye shall keep between me and you, and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised, and ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you, every man child in your generations. He that is born in the house or bought with money of any stranger which is not of thy seed. He that is born in thy house and he that is bought with money must needs be circumcised and my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant and the uncircumcised man child whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised that soul shall be cut off from his people he hath broken my covenant all right so there is uh we have a a monumental change new movement that starts happening right here it's a it's a different it's a different day it's a different ground it's a different um, thing in the mind of God uh, and it's supposed to be a different thing in the mind of Abraham and um, so so I hope that that you noticed what that was uh, that something, uh, well, I use the word monumental, happened between God and Abraham. And it's, um, it's really a whole different kind of relationship on a certain level. So um, let me just say what that is and that is the first thing that that you know one of the first things he says is that uh, um, walk 
thou before me. Okay. And then, um, I don't know if you noticed, but for the first time when he starts talking about the covenant, as we went on down, um, he's not just saying, God's not just saying, well, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do. Like he has up to this point all the time speaking to Abraham. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you the land. I'm going to give you seed. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. He's, he's constantly uh, up to this point speaking on that, that level. Um, and another thing that he was, was uh, always sharing about in those things was faith. And if you think about it, and if you go through the, if you go through like the New Testament scriptures and all these other places, what you begin to find is that you begin to find um, that um, uh, the the scriptures up to sixteen, so we'll say up to fifteen through fifteen, was about faith. It was about faith. By faith, he came out of Egypt, right? And by uh, and uh, then in chapter 15, there's many more examples, but chapter 15 was the one where he's uh, the, the first use of justified by faith is and all of that. And it was it was really a relationship of, of faith. Um, but then um, and I'll probably read that somewhere in here, um, but then uh, uh, it changes. And. Um, it changes within this chapter and with everything, because this is just one big discourse of God speaking, of God speaking to Abraham. And, um, and now he's requiring uh, covenantal relations. He's requiring that we be in covenant together now, not just me not just me doing it all, not just you having faith that I'll do it all, but walk before me and this is what you'll do with your household. Well, before he says all that, I make my covenant with you and uh, uh, you will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee. And then he goes in and says, and this is the covenant. Uh, and he starts talking about circumcision and my covenant shall be in your flesh. Okay, so this is this is a change from faith to walk. From just having faith and being a nice little sweet believer, God doing all this stuff for you to now it's time to walk it out. But it's not just it's not just on that level from God's heart, from God's heart, um, he is wanting to bring us into a relationship with him more than just uh, because while it was a, a relationship with him and Abraham and there were some give and take, this is a covenant relationship. And this is a, a covenants were meant to be more of a thing of the heart. You know, they, they call they call a marriage getting together marriage a marriage covenant. That should be more than a piece of paper. Well, this proves I'm married. No, it needs to be in your flesh. It needs to be in you. You need to have this thing between you and this other person. This is supposed to be real, lifetime, walk down before me, you know, all of that kind of stuff. Well, that's just an example to try to express that I believe in God's heart, he's not uh, instituting um, um, a legal document at all. That that's, not, that's not even close to his heart. That's not even the thing that, that is in him. He is, has been waiting for this step to walk together, to be together to move together and to have a response back. And this is, this is the way our Father is. This is the way Jesus is as life in us. This is the way the Holy Spirit is. They're, from my experience, and you know, I mean, who am I to go by too much, but from my experience, 
they are very relational. I mean, seriously. I know a whole lot of people, oh, God. All, see, he even calls himself Almighty God. So they go, Almighty God, we are here today to sit in hard pews and hear boring sermons. I don't know. But it's not, that's not in his heart. I'm telling you from my experience and, and from what I see in the Word of God and that, that his great desire is Yes, that we be with him, but we be with him in this thing, you know. And so um, I believe that's what's going on here. Uh, and of course, you find that later on. Well, the covenant, the covenant he made with Abraham, well, that, that stays secure all the way up to and past the old covenant that we call the law. This one this one he doesn't give up on. This one he doesn't change. This one he doesn't, you know, this is the one you, you, you can get that in Galatians. Read it in Galatians. And God talks about the covenant. Well, we think that, you know, God's, God's fixed the, the law, the covenant of the law, so that we can now be with him. No, we've entered into the Abrahamic covenant. But more than the Abrahamic covenant, it is this... Um, gathering unto one another, not just us gathering unto him, because he's been gathering unto Abraham up to this point. Uh, uh, in dear ways. Um, and now he's longing that we change the ground, we change the ground rules, we change the way that we function, we, we move into something where now it's going to be us together working this thing out. It's going to be, it's going to be life, and we're going to walk in this together. So, um, and so I was. It made me think of, and I was just writing some things down as I as I even came in, um, thinking of how this works and how you can hear it from different people because. Uh, you 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 look through the Bible, and you see uh, men of God or people of God that really had something with the Lord. It's undeniable. It's real. It's you can tell it's eternal. You can tell it's this is more than religion. This is more than Christianity. This is more than uh, a God creature relationship this is this is they, they really got something going there you know i mean look at david david oh my god his whole life was was relational <laughs> that's what i love about it. i mean even before you know even before he became known he's out on the hillside tending his father's sheep writing the lord is my shepherd i shall not want you know, he maketh me, you know, well, that's him and the Lord being together. And then, so I thought of this, this uh, verse, it's in uh, Psalm 63, 8. Um, and it says, my soul followeth hard after thee. Okay, how many of you have heard uh, him um, or heard this scripture quoted before? Well, probably all of us. How many of you have quoted this scripture in a... Um, in a real way that you really wanted the Lord. I would say a bunch of you. I mean, I think particularly in our group, but I, I would say a bunch of you. Um, how many of you know without looking the rest of the verse? 63.8. How many of you know the end of it, the rest of it? You ready? Okay. My soul, this is David talking, my soul followeth hard after thee. Thy right hand upholdeth me. You see him? I'm going after you and you're holding me up to go after you. We're always going, oh, I got to get harder. I got to go harder after thee. I will, we leave the Lord out. We leave the relationship out. We just go, we put him far away. And that's, you know, the sad thing is a lot of times we're quoting this when we're far away. 
my soul is now I'm now I'm going to get after you, you know, and so it's kind of you um, realizing that you should have been more in tune with him. And but he's far away. So my soul followed hard after you. I'm coming. I'm going to come, you know, but David, David isn't talking about that. He says my I, he's he's in the relationship, just like just like what God is doing with Abram here or Abraham right here. He's he's they're in the relationship together. It's a it's a covenantal relationship. It is it is it is settled and it and it's settled in Abraham's flesh. And, and so, um, so David is saying, you know, look, I'm doing my part, but, but he's not, it's not like we both have parts. It's like we both work together and this is what I do and this is what you do. That's the Godhead, folks. That's how the Godhead functions. The Father functions as a Father. Jesus is the Son and the Savior and the Holy Spirit comes and guides and teaches and brings, reveals Christ. It's all, they're all three very, very different. But they're also one. They're one. They're one. And the one is um, uh, a flow. It's, it's, it's a river. It's a fountain. It's a, it's a living thing. And so, so that's why I love this, this part. I'm going to read it again. My soul followeth hard after thee. Thy right hand upholdeth me. Do you see it? It's just beautiful. It's beautiful to me, you know. And I'm not, I don't even think I'm a sentimental person. It's extremely that. I mean, you know, I care, but I mean, but I, I, I get moved when I see that, um, that instead of me having to be a Christian that's going to go after God and I'm going to, I'm going to do this and, you know, and, and all that kind of stuff, I can enter into something with him. And if my soul is following hard after him, he's going to uphold me. I don't have to worry about his end if I'm doing my end. If we're in this together, which see, again, you could read that as a God thing. And, you know, you got to do your part, you know, like the law. That's not what I'm saying. I don't know how to explain it better. It is it is assurance and rest and uh, beauty that if I'm going after you, Lord, I don't have to worry because you're going to uphold me, not so that I can survive the coronavirus or you're going to uphold me, not so that, you know, I can pay all my bills on time or, or all that stuff. You're going to uphold me to follow hard after you. In other words, you got backup. I don't know how to, but I'm just telling you, it's glorious and it, it it's it's reassuring. It's it's rest. It's like you don't have to go. Well, I need to really follow hard. Well, okay. See, you don't know that his hands are, you know, that his his right hand upholdeth you, which is Christ. It is. But anyway, uh, what you think is that uh, I gotta do this and then he'll do that? No, no. This is a covenant. You, I'm with you. I, I'm thinking of you. You're thinking of me. We're together. I'm the big winner here because you're God and I'm the one who'd come close to failing. But you seem to want to be with me, Lord, in, you know, in, in this walk, in this walk together, in this walk of life and of relationship. So anyway, so I thought of another scripture also, and uh, you know, so this is Abraham, Abram, Abraham that's being spoken to, and this this is coming into, starting to come into play. Just because God said it uh, doesn't mean it's all going to happen immediately, but you'll find in the next chapter that, um, you know, Abraham moved pretty quickly to fulfill the physical things that he could do with this. But that's Abraham. We just talked about David. Let's talk about Moses, okay? And, all right, so, well, Moses was the law, and he represented the law, and all this kind of stuff. Well, it doesn't matter. I mean, he, he really, in a one sense, he does, but in another sense, his relationship wasn't of law. I mean, 
when Jesus was on the Mount of Transfiguration, I mean, you know, people say, well, Moses, God got angry with you and you're not going to enter in the land, but the Mount of Transfiguration, there he is with Jesus and Elijah. So I'd, I'd go, I think Jesus liked him. And what are they talking about? The cross. It says that. They're talking about the cross. Moses, talking about the cross, you know, in a good way? Jesus giving himself? So, let me read this Exodus 33, starting in verse 16. For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not in that thou goest with us? Walk thou before me, and we'll go together, and we'll, you'll go with us, and I'll go with you, and you, you're getting this, this feeling. This is, this is kind of early on. I mean, this is, it, it, it's like there's a, there's a certain place that you have to come to this, you know. I mean, yes, the, the beauty of faith and all of that, and the faith walk and all of that, but this is more than a faith walk. This is a covenant with with someone this is partnering in to them and they partner into you so for wherein shall it be known uh here that i and thy people have found grace in thy sight how will i know that we found grace uh, is it not that in that thou goest with us see okay so now we're working together and then he says so shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the, all the people that are upon the face of the earth. Meaning, we're separating unto you. We're coming. You've been doing your part, which he did. He did. He always does for a long period of time. But then we have to walk with him. And we have to, we have to covenant with him. And I, I'm sure that every time you've ever heard in the past from somebody else covenant that it, it, it took you somewhere else. Well, I'm sorry for that. I, I apologize for that. But this is, this is a, a heart pact. And that's why it's so big in Galatians and in the New Testament. God's pointing there. He's pointing there, and he's making Paul. He's showing. He's revealing all this to Paul. Paul didn't know it. He's revealing it. Paul still thought the law was it, but then, or Saul did, and then he's revealing it. And he he's writing Galatians based on it, because he saw something of the heart of the Lord. So then he says, uh, verse seventeen, and the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken. For thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. He just called Abraham a new name. I know you by name now. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. Okay? So the Lord's going to walk. He's going to pass before him, and he's going to see his walk, and he's going to see his glory. But the important thing is, is that, Moses is responding. He's responding from the heart. He's been carrying a big load and he's been maybe handling things in, you know, not the most perfect way. But he comes to a place where he goes, look, I want us to walk together. And I need to see your glory. I want to see your glory. In other words, I don't just want to know what you can do for me while, I, while I'm in the faith period. I want to know you now. I want to walk with you. And that's how you get to know somebody. You know that. I mean, you can go to church. You can go to a, a, a nominal church uh, every Sunday, not now, but you used to could, uh, every Sunday, and see the same people and not know anything about them, you know? I mean, not know really anything other than, you know, within the confines of, of a service or whatever. But um, uh, even that can be deceiving. I mean, you know, because, well, 
Every, I, I've had so many people tell me this, I cannot even number it. People that are in the church and go, well, everybody seems so spiritual. And da, 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 da. Well, but, but me, you know, and you go, oh, they're not. <laughs> you know. But we don't know. How do we know? We look at things and, well, somebody can pray well and, you know, somebody can preach well. All of those are not, not measures that God measures by. God doesn't look on the outward appearance. He looks on the heart. And Moses is now coming in heart. I want to know you. I want to see your glory. I want to start walking together in this, just like David did, and just like what's going on with, with Abraham here. So, um, didn't even get into the scriptures yet, just talked about the the, the movement there. So uh, some of the things that I'll probably say here, well, maybe not. So in verse 1, God appears to Abram when he's 99 years old. Okay? 99 years old. He is one of those that's very susceptible to the virus. And after uh, Ishmael is born, um, then we have no record of God speaking to Abraham for all that 13 years. None of it, okay? Um, and I wrote, all this time Abraham probably still thought that Ishmael was the son that God saved when, when uh, Hagar was left and then God appeared to her when they thought it was done, when I say they, Abraham and Sarah, and appeared to Hagar and brought her back. Who So, all this time, Abram probably still thought that Ishmael was the son that God saved and raised up as the firstborn. Okay? This is, you know, this is it. Uh, and so, uh, and then I wrote, Clearly, as seen in the coming chapters, he did not think that God was angry with him over having Ishmael. He didn't. Because he all the way up until chapter 22, basically, even in chapter 21, he's arguing with God, well, you know, no, let, let Ishmael walk before you. He's going, I don't think so. That's not the plan. That's not the one. That's not the heart. That's not the heart. That's not, it's, it's not in him. It's in him to mock. It's in him to look down on others. It's in him to be a beast to others around him. Uh, he's not the one. But God doesn't say that. God didn't say that to Abram uh, uh, up to this point. And he's not saying it right here. So when God's speaking this whole chapter, and he's speaking this whole chapter, while he's speaking this, if you could, uh, now, you know, God setting the stage for a whole new relationship. But, you know, that it's a little bit like a marriage again on this, okay? You make the marriage covenant, you come together, you know, and uh, after the what we call the honeymoon period, which is not just a few days off in the Bahamas or something, but, you know, maybe even the first year, probably not that much, you realize that the person that you just made a covenant with is flawed, you know. You go, dude, you don't pick up your socks or something. <laughs> I'm sure we got a lot worse things than that. But we, we find out, you know, that there's things that aren't, that need to be worked out. Let's put it like that. You only do that through walking together. Right? You do that by walking together. All right. So, um, I, I said clearly as seen in the coming chapters, he did not think that God was angry with him over Ishmael. So the picture that I was getting was, okay, so if you had God standing right here on my left and you had Abram, who's now Abraham, standing on my right and I'm not in the middle, I'm just telling you the story and God is speaking to Abram, Abraham, and Abraham is listening, and 
God is speaking about the promised seed. And Abram is listening and hearing Ishmael. The whole time. The whole chapter. That's what's going on. Okay. Do you ever think that happens with us, where God speaks to us and we apply it to ourselves? Do you ever think that our prayers apply to ourselves instead of the seed? That God is trying to make a covenant with us based on the seed, which Galatians again, and we're, we're continually pushing ourselves in the middle of that thing, even if we don't stop God and say, you know, oh, da, 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 or whatever, Everything that he's saying, we're saying, yeah, oh, yeah, you know, because Ishmael represents us too, you know. Um, yeah, uh, oh, thank God, oh, you know, I already got all this stuff. No, 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 no. We need to walk before me. We need to walk together uh, and come into this covenantal relationship. Just saying it doesn't make it true yet. That's why we're going to walk this out together. Okay, that, That's God speaking to Abraham. So Abraham is just picturing all this wonderful stuff, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to go circumcise um, Ishmael. Well, you know, he's, he's not the one. You can... You can you can put stuff, mark stuff in his flesh, but he's not the one. He's not the one God wants. He's not the one God cares about. He's not the one that, that uh, will fulfill the other end of this thing. And, and how sad when God is setting up chapter 17 here, and he's setting up this this relationship and Abraham is tearing it down unknowingly not not being malicious but being human being us being us um, God calls those things that be not as though they were I'm sure you know those scriptures God God calls those things which be not as though they were so he calls Abra Abram Abraham he calls those things which be not as though they were. It will become, but he is not at this stage. That's what he's saying to you. He says stuff to you, and he's saying this to you. Don't be applying all this to you. Don't apply it to you. If, if God is saying that to you, your ears, but talking to Jesus in you, then get out of the way. Just get out of the way. Quit, quit taking it on going, well, the Lord told me that I was going to, you know, you know. I mean, we always go, the Lord told me that, you know, he was going to really use me. Or the Lord was told me that he's going to gift me to be able to do so and so. Or, you know, the Lord told me he's going to send me to the mission field. Or, um, well, if the Lord's not sending his seed to the mission field, you don't need to be going. I found that out, and I won't tell you the stories of my couple of years on the mission field, but I got to see this in action with people who were supposedly God told them to go there, and clearly he didn't. Well, that's, that's a blatant one. You get out in an island with strangers and different language or different culture and stuff like that, it's going to show up pretty quick, but we can meld in. We can melt in and meld into the the American culture and still appear right and good when, you know, what Jesus said is you're full of dead men's bones. Well, you know what? He can say that to me and I can say amen instead of, uh -uh, I'm really good. I've been reading my Bible and I, I tithe and whatever, one of the dumb stuff that we say. To, you know, I just want to hear what he has to say about the seed and I want to make sure that that all goes to him. And that I'm not siphoning off glory, you know, just like, again, the father speaking and Abram is sitting there listening and he's going, oh, yeah, this, I can, these words, I can apply this to me. And 
this oh yeah and I'll, I'll tell so and so this one and and this one will sustain me and my flesh this will s sustain my flesh for years to come he's going God's going in his mind he's going I am telling you to cut your flesh off I am telling you to get rid of your flesh don't you understand what we're talking about here but he doesn't say that because he's trying to have the beginnings of a walk together and he wants that you know he wants that um, so um, God's first words to him had to do with who he is who God is who he is and what he expects in his walk he introduces himself as El Shaddai um, um, I won't. I won't talk about all of the books and things that have been written on the names of God, and that for us we just make it all about us. Well, you know, then he's this. Um, he's you know El Shaddai, or he's uh, you know some of the other names, and it's all in relationship to how that can benefit us. That's how we see that. Well, that's he's telling you who he is. And we don't we're not gonna understand that because he is God and we were just mortals on this planet and we can't comprehend that unless we walk with him. And listen to him about you know, to find out about him, you know. And, and, and again, everything that he shares with us in the word should not be understood to be about us. He's talking about the seed in Galatians again, backside up. He's talking about the seed and the seeds in us. And we go, well, it's, you know, he's going to, you know, no, it's the seed. Um, Also, from this point forward, much will have to do with manifestation and walking out the truth. Now, before it was just faith. You didn't really you didn't have to manifest anything, you know, not not for a period of time. You know, the main thing is, is that you get it down in you and you get your trust in the Lord instead of in yourself. And, you know, and so uh, now it's going to be walking out truth not just learning truth and um, I put in other words faith that was the focus of chapter 11 through 16 is important but it must now be lived out so quoting um, book of James here I did write this down um, James 2 verse 20 through 24 but wilt thou know, or will you know this, O vain man, wilt thou know, wilt thou know this, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Well, he's not talking about works like under the law. He's talking about fruit. He's talking about manifestation. He's talking about that it starts coming out in real ways where you can see that he has has the spirit of the covenant and has lined up with it. <coughs> Man, coronavirus is going to kill me yet. <coughs> um, was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Okay, so... Um, so in the, the faith days, Abraham was, uh, was, uh, doing altars a lot and that's great. And we've covered that and, and it's wonderful. Um, but there's an altar that counts, not one that you're practicing on as it were, not one that you're sort of, um, you're with him, but you're not in covenant with him okay 
And so he's saying that it has, this has to be, it's good to learn something about the cross. It's not good to just take that and go try to do it. You want to get it in you so that it does it or he does it where it's life, where it uh, doesn't have to be works. See, because we can make all of this works too. You know, we can make living Christ crucified works. We can all of this stuff because we get under it and we get guilty. And we're, well, that's clearly that's the law, folks. It is. It is. I mean, that was the whole thing. Again, Galatians, where he's trying to bring us out of that into this thing that if you're Christ, you're Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Bingo. It's coming down right here in this chapter. Well, then, okay, the seed in me is the heir, and I'm going to trust that, and I'm going to be with him, and he's going to manifest in, in time, but I'm going to continue to walk with you, Lord, and know you, and to see you, not so that I'll have some new deep thing to share and impress people with, but to take that and, and instead of write it down or prepare it per se, to, to want to apply it into your heart. Lord, um, make this real and Jesus is the seed to whom it applies. So make it real by the seed that you already put in me and you you know, he saved you, folks. You didn't save yourself. He, at a certain juncture in time, reached down into the earth and saved you. But he didn't save you just so you could be Christian. He saved you by, because he put his seed in you. Everything that you feel is, glory to God, I'm saved. I'm not going to hell. But what he's doing is, praise God, not himself, but <laughs> that I put the seed within you. And that seed's going to come forth. That's, he's like a farmer. There we go in James again. He has, the farmer has much patience until he receives the, the harvest of that from the early and latter rain. So, um, verse 22, Seest thou how faith wrought with his works? And by works was faith made perfect. Okay. So it's not my intention to, to fully explain all this to you, but I can tell you that um, it's just talking about um, the works are just talking about a manifestation of that. That if you believe something, it, it'll eventually be so real to you that it will come forth. Well, you know, in this case, you're believing in the fruit of the seed. Do you believe? Do you believe a seed? You know, if I held up a seed here, if I held up two different kinds of seed and I said, do you believe that these seeds will bring forth fruit if I plant them and they fall in the ground and die? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So that's great. So let's try it a different way. Do you believe that the seed that God put in you if it falls in the ground and die, it's going to bring forth his nature. Yeah, I hope so. Well, that ain't faith. Sitting around saying, I hope so. You know. That, how can you believe the, the practical thing, but not the life and spirit from which it came? You know, well, I believe this, but I can't believe the real thing that that's a shadow of. What's up with that? All right. So, verse 23, And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friends of, friend of God. Okay, so, he says that it's fulfilled. It's fulfilled. The scripture now is fulfilled of what was said in Genesis 15, which we spent a lot of time there. In fact, we just, just barely got out of it now. We've been there for a long time. That 
um, that the scripture, what the scripture said in Genesis 15 about Abraham believed God and it will, was imputed to him for righteousness, it's imputed uh, uh, that uh, it was imputed unto him for righteousness that it's fulfilled. It is now fulfilled in him offering up Isaac. Okay. Well, we go back to some of the things I shared there. Um, we saw God take Abram out and he showed him all the stars which no man could number and you could see them back then in those days, no artificial light. <clears throat> and we always say, well, we... We, we believe the stars. Well, we believe he's going to, you know, but didn't say that. And this doesn't say us. said that we believe God, that God wants his seed, that God put his seed in us. I believe God and he can multiply like crazy if I believe God, not me, not what I see or feel or taste or touch, but I believe God and here's, here's the, here it is. I believe God and his heart as it pertains to his son. He didn't put his son in me to save me. He put his son in me to bring forth that son. And I, I believe God and it's count, that's that belief that that's his heart, that that's what he wants, that that's what he lives for, that that's what he did all this for. And that's counted to me for righteousness and it'll be fulfilled when it starts popping out, manifesting, like it is offering up Isaac, the crucified, the lamb. And then, um, and you gotta love this, uh, it says, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Now it doesn't say that in Genesis, it's also quoted, I think, over in Isaiah somewhere. <clears throat> um, or somewhere, um, but it's the fulfillment of this chapter. Walk thou before me and be in covenant with me and let's be together in this. That's the fulfillment of the heart cry of God called Genesis 17. He did it. He did what? He manifested what God wanted. He sh it showed forth in him. And God said, that's the fulfillment of you having faith and counted you for righteousness. It wasn't really fulfilled until there was a manifestation of it. Um, and then verse, and, let me just say, and, now he's the friend of God. Okay. Now he's a friend of God. They're together. All right. How many of you really can say, well, you know, me and God are friends? You know, I know the hippies used to say that. You know, when we, when we first got born again and came into the Jesus movement, we'd say, you know, well, you know, me and Jesus are got a good thing going and we got, you know, but it was really a not built on a true relationship because we didn't really know him. We just know we felt close to God because he saved us and he loved us and so therefore all of that. But we didn't know the depth of the love or even what that love manifested looks like. It looks like a cross. But, you know, can say, you know, friend of God. What's that mean? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Well, really, to be a friend in that, you've got to be in that whole mix of what they're about. And what they're about is that this life and spirit that is Christ be in us. And then not just be hidden in us while we believe it, but manifested forth. So, uh, verse 24 you see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. So that's how James uh, 
ends that to, to say, well, okay, so then uh, now you see it. <laughs> I mean, ye see then. And this is his thinking. It's the way he thinks. He goes, well, okay, so guess what? We can look in Genesis 15, see what God said. We can look in Genesis 22 and go, bingo, he's the friend, friend of God. He has become, he has come into that relationship of Genesis 17. And all of a sudden, these chapters are all one, and they're all coming together, and they're all bringing forth. So then, you see then, that, a, that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. You see that this, this was, <clears throat> that, that justifying or justification in this sense to God is, um, uh, if you read Romans, particularly the first four chapters, you start reading about justification. And uh, you, one of the things you see is that uh, it talks a whole lot about God being justified instead of us. God's justified in saving us. God's justified in putting up with us all these years. God's justified in it. When you see then how that by the manifestation of this Lamb spirit, uh, uh, through that, a man is justified and not by just believing in the Lamb teaching. I'll say it like that. All right, so I'm going to stop because you will need a break and uh, Kelly's going to come teach, but let me pray uh, in closing. And then uh, next week, let me put a little note here, which I don't have yet up. Uh, Let's pray. Father, I just, I'm, you know, these can sound like words. Uh, it wasn't words to David when he said, My soul followeth hard after thee, thy right hand upholds me. That wasn't just teaching. It wasn't religion. He literally was, as it were, Lord, you were his friend. Um, it wasn't teaching when Moses cried out, I want to see your glory. And is not the proof of grace that you will be with us and walk with us. Father, we got to know you and your Son and the Holy Spirit so that we become uh, partnered into one thing. It's, in other words, it's not just about you doing stuff for us. It's us responding back. It's as if you would have wanted to respond back. You would have wanted Abraham, Abraham to respond back when you said, as for me, my covenant is with you. You would have wanted him to respond back and say, well, you know what? As for me, my heart is with you in this covenant. But he had room to grow. Father, I thank you for grace, but give us the grace that Abraham talked about and Moses talked about and <clears throat> David understood. And Father, may we move out of our way all of this religious and all this requirements and all this guilt and all this stuff and just come and say, I want to know you and I want to, I want to go hard after you knowing that we're in this together and that your right hand will uphold me. Father, work this in us so that it's fulfilled and you'll be justified in saving us and keeping us all these times and years. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen.